Lee Kane congratulating the Prime Minister just after the election. The number 10 head of communications isn't a household name, but Whitehall knows his name and it quaked last night at the thought he could be promoted to number 10 chief of staff. Uh, I've got a lot of fantastic uh, members of staff and as soon as there's uh, any further announcements to be made about uh, that you'll be hearing in due course. All this matters because around Westminster, Lee Kane's possible promotion is seen as Dominic Cummings tightening his grip on government. Just as some Tory MPs were daring to hope they might be able to prise his fingers off power. Their hopes informed in part by stories that the Prime Minister had been seeing old allies recently and telling them he knew his government wasn't functioning properly and there would have to be changes. One former cabinet minister said today, this government is a not very good show. A lot of it is because of number 10 serial incompetence, which comes with extraordinary arrogance. This, the former cabinet minister said, would make it even worse. Lee Kane is a close ally of Dominic Cummings from Vote Leave days. One of many who worked with him at Vote Leave's crowded, sweaty offices over the river from Parliament, and who now pepper Downing Street and Whitehall. We spoke to senior figures at Vote Leave to ask who were in the top tier of strategic advisers in that organisation in the run-up to the referendum. Fourteen names came up. Of them, seven are in senior positions inside number 10. Another two have been inside number 10. Three advise regularly at a senior level from outside. We asked who was in the next tier down. Another 14 names came up. Of them, nine are in senior positions around Whitehall. Another one advises from outside. Some people say these are Dominic Cummings' eyes within Whitehall. Others say his spies, his enforcers. Are some of these people his disciples, the ones that have moved into number 10, the Whitehall departments? Yes. Um, are, are people uh, Dom Cummings' disciples? I think so. I think Dom is offering a new way of doing things and it's a proven way of doing things you know is, is, is he jesus christ probably not but well, is he maybe a minor cult leader well when they would say cult, maybe some. maybe maybe more like a general many from the gang dominic cummings used to look out from his vote leave office on have now been inserted into senior jobs in number 10. they include senior figures in the brexit negotiating team in Downing Street, they pepper the building. But what do they bring to government? It was a close team and it was like you work closely together for, you know, a good eight, nine months. So, you, you know, I, have, I think there's some great people in government. I'm biased, they're my friends. Um, but I think there's some really smart and dedicated people. We keep being told number 10 wants to hire people that can see round corners. It would be nice if we had people who could see what's in front of their nose. An armistice commemoration in Westminster Abbey, masked as never before. The thinned attendance across the commemorations, a reminder of the massive challenges of governing in a pandemic. Tory MPs and ministers complain that the team reassembled by Dominic Cummings have the wrong skill set for this extraordinary moment. Yes, I think we've got some people in uh, uh, at number 10 who are quite good at running campaigns and were obviously exceedingly good at running elections. We're not in an election period now. We are in a national and international uh, crisis. Move that way, great pass through. Can you really defend? You're supposed, to, you're supposed to be more than two metres apart. Many Tory MPs wanted Dominic Cummings sacked when they felt he damaged public health messaging with his trip to Durham during lockdown. The tension with some Tory MPs driven also by what they feel is the loathing Dominic Cummings and some of his closest Vote Leave allies feel for them and all they love. The enemies were kind of the establishment, the established way of doing things, the old order, Whitehall, the Conservative Party. Yeah, and it, very much the Conservative Party. That was the great feeling. It was, we want to get these guys because they're wrong. The, the thing that probably separates some of the people that worked on Vote Leave or a lot of people that worked on Vote Leave is they're happy to rock the boat. There was a, a saying often in the press team, which is like, that's a row we want to have. And, you know, we were quite happy to do that. But even a veteran of that press team, like Lee Kane, knows fights like this one shouldn't spill into the street. Those close to the saga say the Prime Minister's fiance is opposing Lee Kane's promotion to Chief of Staff. 
a soap-like spectacle, just as the nation might hope their leaders were focused on the epic challenges of the moment. Well, joining me now is Tim Montgomery, a Conservative commentator and activist who is briefly a special advisor to the Prime Minister. Tim Montgomery, do you agree with the Labour leader that this is all rather undignified infighting in the midst of a, a global pandemic? Well, I can certainly understand that this is not what the public want to be talking about. But it clearly does matter that Downing Street, the office of the nation's prime minister, is well run. And um, as uh, Gary's package just made clear, Downing Street isn't well run at the moment. There are some incredibly capable individuals there, including uh, Dominic Cummings. But there isn't organisation, there isn't structure. There certainly isn't accountability for someone like Dominic Cummings. There's an absence of a chief of staff and the kind of operation that uh, Boris Johnson had when he was mayor of London that made him, um, supported him in the ways that he needed. So would Lee Kane, as chief of staff, actually just simply reinforce Dominic Cummings's power? Yes, I, I think that is um, the danger. There are too many people at the moment in Downing Street who all think the same. They're allies of um, Dominic Cummings, and they're part of a problem that I think has bedeviled this government, is that it's, it was made very clear very early on, whether you're a minister or a special advisor, that if you spoke out of turn, if you spoke freely, um, that was not something that was good for your career. We need people, given the uh, enormity of the challenges we face, we need people with different views. And we need a culture in Downing Street whereby if people say something critical, it's listened to, and the person who utters that uh, candid uh, view isn't punished and fears that their career may suffer as a result. And I'm afraid Lee Kane, potentially becoming chief of staff, would reinforce that danger. Isn't there a sense that, you know, Downing Street is running things differently? This is a different kind of Downing Street. Well, it's certainly a different kind of um, Downing Street, but I don't think it's a, a very good uh, Downing Street. When you have Tory MPs, just as in that package that you've just broadcast, people who've been loyal under previous prime ministers, being quite so critical of a Conservative prime minister and his government just a few months after you know, securing a majority uh, that should have guaranteed stability for most of this parliament. I think when you have that kind of disquiet, um, I think it's reasonable to look for a quite substantial reorganisation and a more conventional structure, uh, which currently is absent. Well, we've had this intriguing vignette today of, of Dominic Cummings and the Prime Minister's fiance Carrie Simons, sort of vying for his ear. Mm. Um, who's got the upper hand there? I wouldn't dare to, to say, but I think it's certainly true that um, Carrie, the uh, Prime Minister's fiancé, is probably one of the most influential spouses um, of, of, of the modern era. And we don't know exactly, beyond issues like the environment, quite where, how she lobbies uh, the Prime Minister. Um, but I think one of the advantages that she brings is that she certainly isn't one of the many other people in Downing Street who basically do as Dominic Cummings says. She's an independent voice, uh, one clearly that the Prime Minister values. And while it will be impossible for us to know quite what she says, um, I think certainly on this occasion, if reports are to, believed, to be believed, um, she's given very useful advice. We, we need an experienced chief of staff in that role, not someone who's been comms director and not a particularly brilliant comms director at that. Tim Montgomery, thanks very much.